Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a lava, a lava flow effect. Something I've done before, about five years ago nearly now, and looking back at it, I feel it's well overdue an update. I really love painting this kind of thing. I've done it in traditional paint on canvas using acrylic and oil. Not always lava, but the glowing effect, whether it's burning embers, or that kind of look I've really been fascinated with. I've also done it in digital paintings more recently, and it's something I keep returning to because it's just a real passion. So I'm going to do a more updated one compared to my last tutorial. I'm gonna show you step by step how to create this kind of effect and hopefully you can follow along. Now, if you do follow along and you're pleased with your results, make sure to share them with me, tag me on Instagram or join my Facebook group. And there's a great community there of people that share their work and give feedback. And it's really positive and constructive. The links for those are down in the video description itself. In terms of what I'm actually using, I've got an iPad Pro, although you can use any iPad. I'm using the app Procreate, which again is compatible with all the iPads. I've opened an A4 canvas within Procreate. I'm going to be using a mixture of brushes, so I'm going to be using the Burnt Tree brush within the charcoals, just for some added texture towards the end. But for the majority of the painting, we're going to be going within the airbrushing, and I'm going to be using a mixture of soft and medium airbrush. I try to keep things simple. You can experiment with more brushes yourself, but I get you to the overall effect and then you can play around with it yourself. In terms of the colors, I've selected some colors already. If you want to use these colors, the link in my video description will take you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free. Just below the link in the description, there are the color codes and you can put them in one at a time here within the value section within the colors. You can put them in, they are the hexadecimal codes. Type them in one at a time, press enter, the colour appears up here, tap it into your colour palette and create your own. Okay, with all that said and done, we're just going to go to our background colour and we just want a really nice solid black. So all you need to do, as long as you're on the colour disc area, is go to where you think it looks blackest already, double tap in that area and you can see it's just sent it to pure jet black. Now if there's any strange smudges and fingerprints and anomalies appearing on the screen, that sometimes happens when I have a completely black background. I apologise in advance can't tell until I'm editing the video so hopefully there's nothing showing up that's going to be an interference. So the very first brush I'm going to be using is the soft brush and we're going to be building this up gradually so I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to go to the darkest red that we've got here and if I show you on the color disc you see it's a pretty dark version of a red. Now it's slightly towards the pink end of red rather than the orange but it is very dark and if I just show you here at full opacity then you can see the kind of effect that you're going to get. Now bear in mind the camera that I'm using may distort the colours slightly which is why I provide the colours so if it looks a little bit different on your iPad compared to what you're seeing on the screen then just be aware that it is the camera that's doing that. So we're on the soft brush. I'm going to put it to around 3% size. I'm going to turn the opacity down to around 50%. And what I'm wanting to do is just create some areas now that are producing lava flow. So what you tend to get is an edge and then that's perhaps a cooled part of the actual lava. And then you get a new part that breaks free from that edge. So I'm just creating a really sharp defining edge that we're going to have the lava flowing from. It's pretty rough at this stage, don't get too bogged down in anything particular right now. Much of this red is going to be buried beneath other colours that we're going to add on top anyway. Let's turn the brush up in fact, let's put it up to 5% and let's just really bring in, get the sense of where it's going to flow. So I want the concentrated bits to be here and here. And you can see this overall bump that I've created. That's where it's gonna be flowing from. And that's almost like the breakout. That's the hottest point. That's where the breakout is coming from. But we're gonna go all the way across. So you create your composition. You might use these effects, this overall technique, but you might create your own composition that is different than this. And that's absolutely fine. Keeping it quite rough, just generally creating a sense that there is a concentration here and here, and then just adding some random kind of shapes in amongst the rest as well. Something like that. We'll create another layer. We'll keep these things on separate layers just so that we can go back in. We can alter a previous layer. We don't want them all stacked onto one layer because if you make a mistake and you want to change the overall background perhaps later on, then it's better if it's on a different layer. This is the way that I tend to work within my painting techniques as well. It just helps you separate things out, 
change details on one layer without ruining the whole picture. So we're gonna to go to the next red along. You can see that this one is slightly more into the orange area and it's slightly brighter. And you'll notice that straight away when I put it on the canvas. So I'm going to reduce the size of this back down and I'm gonna put this down to the top end of 2% and I'm gonna reduce the opacity to around 30% because it is quite a bit stronger. And we're gonna get way brighter on this edge later on, but I just want to start building it up color at a time rather than going straight in with the brightest colors. It, it does tend to work much better if you do this incrementally rather than going straight at it with the brightest colors. So I'm just gonna pick up certain points along this edge, but I'm not gonna create a neat line all the way across. I just want to have it concentrated in certain areas, and then maybe just points as we go along. Now I do want a general sense of the flowing direction, so I'm gonna bring some of these lines down. And you almost have to imagine that it's spilling over rock shapes as well. So perhaps you can start to just create a sense of where the direction is going to go. So I'm imagining there's a rock underneath here, so it's spilling over here, so I can create a few lines that help support that idea. And I'm gonna keep them separated and broken. Pretty rough at this stage really, but even so, you can start to get quite a dramatic look without a great deal of time spent. And perhaps it's gonna join back up almost. So we can create these kind of shapes so it's swirling back up into the other blob or the other breakout area. And then we'll start back up here as well. Again, similar to that one, we need to decide where's the movement going on here. So we'll create another flow. Perhaps it comes further down here. Keep it as broken gestural lines to begin with. I'm gonna have a sense that it's pooling perhaps. kind of shape. We're going to be more defined with this, don't worry. We're just trying to get a sense of the, the flow and the shape and the, the way that it might move. And then beyond that, we can get into the specific details. So you're building up in your imagination a sense of what's where, a 3 d ness a landscape for all of this lava to move around in. It's not even about how it looks just yet. It's just that sense of where it's all going. I might just even have this spilling off the bottom of the frame there a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna create another layer. We may well go back into that layer and refine that, obviously, a lot further. But on this next layer, I probably will keep with the same red, but I'm just going to turn it up to 7%, and I'm gonna turn the opacity down to about 10%. And I'm just going to go over some of the areas that I've just created and just build up some of that glowing look, just to go over it a little bit. Can always darken up certain areas again later on. If we want it to cool back off, then we can do that in certain selected sections. We'll create another layer and we'll go back to our colors, go to the third color along this time, and you can see it's more, even more orange perhaps, but it's certainly a lot lighter. I'm now I'm gonna turn the brush back down to about 2% and back up to around 40% opacity. And again, I'm just going to use this now to start to create just some sections around the top where we have a clear point at which we're having a breakout. So it's not gonna be a joined up line as such, it's gonna be a broken texture along these different points. And then we can start to go into here as well and just build up some sections now. In fact, let's turn the size of the brush up to about 3%. And we're just starting to create a sense that there's some brighter sections here at the top, but we're keeping it splitting apart, breaking it. We don't want it as a completely unbroken area at all. So I'm concentrating some of that light in that area, and then I'm gonna do the similar kind of thing in this area too. Perhaps we need to go back to our colors and just use some of more these yellowy orange colors. So I'm gonna go for the white, not the lemon yellow, but a slightly further yellow here where it's a, a touch more orange in it. I'll put it to 2% size and we'll keep it at the 40% opacity. And again, this is just an exercise in building up some of this glow. So I've not changed layers, I'm still on layer four. 
but we're just building up some of this glow effect. Now it's important if you're going to start adding these brightest colours that you don't suddenly do it in an area where it's got black and even don't do it in an area where it's dark red. So I would first begin by using a bright red and then going into a bright red section and just highlighting and bringing it out even more, making it more exaggerated with the yellows and brighter colours. But I would strongly suggest that you start with the bright red. If you want to intensify an area, use that orangey red colour. Intensify the area first, give it a bed or a background brightness and then you can go back into it with this next yellow colour bring it up a notch with this yellow. Now sometimes you can take it right close to the edge where the dark colours are, but it shouldn't be yellow and then immediately black. So if I zoom in, you'll see that you've got that yellow, but then you've got a cushion of red before it hits the darkest colours. Even if it's a very thin section of glowing red before it gets to the dark, that is going to be really important. Obviously, a little later on, we're going to go to the brightest colours and that might include white. You might put a white here, for example, and really intensify a certain area. But again, it's within the yellows. So you do it a bright colour, then an even brighter within it, and then an even brighter within that. I'm going to stick with these red colours. I've got two, one slightly more white, slightly more pastel -y, but I'm going to stick with a slightly more intense one, which is the third colour along to begin with. I'm going to put it back up to 3% size, and it's still at the 40% opacity. And we're just going to bring more of this glow in because it really should be a lot more of this perhaps at the top. So probably I need to get rid of the absolute darkest reds in most of this area. Now I could have gone straight in with that colour like I said at the beginning but sometimes you just need to take things gradually and just sit back, look at the effect, see how it's working and then intensify it if it's necessary. But generally the approach that I would take is to build it up more gradually rather than going straight in with the darkest of the or the brightest of the colours. So I'm going to intensify the light in all of this area. In fact, so I'm going to turn the size of the brush up to 5% and then just lightly start to build some of this up. I'm going to take it pretty much all the way across. Turn the brush size up even more to 7%. I'm going to turn it down to 20% opacity or thereabouts. And just build up the brightness in this area generally. You can always add dark areas back in. That is never going to be a problem. So I've really got a lot of that light red in there now. So now I can feel more confident that I can go more in with the yellow colours. So I think I probably will create another layer for this. I've already added a bit of yellow for this but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to concentrate more of that yellow now on this brand new layer, but I am going to turn the brush size down. I want to be more precise with this now to the top end of 2%. I'm going to put it up, back up to 40% again. I'm going to concentrate back in now. We've got a nice background of this red glow, not a bright primer red. It's got a, an oranginess to it, slight hint of white in there. That just makes it slightly more luminescent and a little less primary looking. So it's broken texture, it's all moving in the direction that we want it. So I'm going to have the breaks in this slightly less at the beginning, so you're going to have quite a concentration of this yellow. So it's going to split and it's going to have gaps and breaks, but they're not going to be too much. Most of what we see here is going to be the yellow. We'll do the same over here as well. But as we come further down, we're going to have more breaks in that. So we're going to have just points of yellow now. So it's going to be more of a broken texture. Maybe along this top edge where we know it's splitting from the cooler areas, we can have a concentration, more points of this yellow as we move across. But we don't want a solid line. It will, I promise you, ruin the effect. But again, we're back in this area now where we've got one of the breakouts and we can concentrate the yellow a little bit more, having it extending further along. Just 
So it's just peeling away from that top edge here a little bit, still splitting roughly in that area. It is breaking out from that region, but it doesn't all have to come straight from that actual edge. It can be just from that region. And that very edge itself is kind of fragmented. So you get some of the darkness breaking off into little sections all the way along that edge as well. You don't want a completely neat line. So as we get into more this area and more in this area, we're just gonna have it starting to break apart those little points of yellow are gonna become fragmented, not quite as potent, not quite as strong, maybe just occasionally in places, you get a slight flare up of that yellow. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. I'm gonna go back to my colors. I'm gonna use this color just before the yellow this time. I'm gonna put it up to around 5% and down to 20% opacity and we're just going to start bringing some of this color. Now it is over the top of the yellow and that's fine. But we're just gonna bring it down a little bit. Now you can still see the original textures and the broken flow underneath all of this, which is gonna be really useful because we'll go back over it with our darker colors in a moment. But again, we're just trying to create a hazy glowing effect here. There's different ways that we could do this. If we went back to the yellow color, yellow layer five, we could go for example, to the adjustments, to the bloom, affect the whole layer and just slide it across. And it's gonna intensify and extend this effect. But for now, I think it's too dramatic. We can always go back to that and experiment. But for now, I feel that's too much. I prefer to do this more manually. So we'll go back up to layer six. We're just adding some more of this hazy, glowing color over the top of all of this now. Just increasing the brightness generally in this region. extend it across a little bit. Turn the brush size up to 10% and the opacity down to 10% as well. And we can just go over all of this area just to ramp it up a notch, but just a little bit. So we're going to create another layer. We're going to go back to our colors. We're going to use the brightest two colors now. We're going to just intensify some of these areas just to give everything else a context. So we're going to go to this next yellow along. Now it is quite a lot brighter. We're going to put it at 2% size and 30% opacity. Decide on where some of these brighter areas are going to be. Now, I'm going to just reserve these colors now for the breakout areas of here and here, predominantly. I think to extend it too much into the rest of the scene, it's just going to make it too evenly spread around the place. And I think compositionally, it's more interesting to really focus the eye into certain areas, have a change of effects from one region to another region. So again, I'm just going within the areas that are already quite bright yellow, and I'm just using this yellow to ramp them up even further, push it even further in that direction. I can have them joining up also. If I feel like I want to extend the yellow into another area, I can do that. Again, so I'm not extending it anywhere further than just these breakout points. And then on the same layer, I'm just gonna go to the white color as well, pick out where do we want the absolute extreme white to be and use even less of this use it sparingly, zoom into the areas or focus into the areas where you've got already got the strongest white or the strongest yellow rather. Add some just points of white in there just to really bring it out and ramp it up. But again, very sparingly for this. If you start to add white to areas where there's not already the bright yellow, it just doesn't work. So we'll create another layer and I'm gonna go for the second color along at the top row. We've already used the black. It's there just in case we need to go back in and intensify some of those dark blacks, but we're gonna use the second color. I'm still on the soft brush, but we're gonna turn the opacity down to 2% and the, or rather the size down to 2%, beg your pardon, and the opacity down to about 20%. So I'm just going to find some areas now, gradually, where 
perhaps there's some texture that I would like to just bring back into focus a little bit. So there might be some broken sections along here that I just want to add some more darkness to reclaim them from that pinky red glow or that orangey red glow. And having little bits of broken dark texture in now, almost like little islands that have been broken up into the lava and being dragged along. So it's breaking up from the edge and then being dragged along with the lava flow. So you're gonna have little bit, bits of broken dark color just breaking up and dragging along. Now I've set it quite low opacity because if you press it or tap it a few times, you get a really nice fainter color. Obviously, if you put it at full opacity, it's gonna be quite dark straight away. We don't want that. Put it back down to around 20% and especially where it's already starting to get a little bit cooler perhaps, we can introduce more of these broken bluey black texture. This is really where you're gonna start adding some of the character and some of the interest into this lava flow. But a more of a mottled broken texture in here. And we can make even more of a feature of this a little later on when we go back in with some highlights and just pick out some of the gaps between these dark textures. So it's a combination of those highlights between the blobs, but you need to put the dark texture in there as well. So again, perhaps just some hints of broken texture being dragged in from the top there still, but not too much. If we want to really create a glowing effect here, we don't want too much of that. I've concentrated it here because it's already quite a cooled off area, dark area it is anyway. And again, I can do more of this in this section. It's already a bit cooler as it is. So we're going for these almost like stripes. Imagine them almost like zebra stripes where they, it is a striped effect, but they're not neat. They kind of collide into each other in places. There might be stripes that splinter off, divide off, run alongside each other a little bit. Again, think about the direction. Imagine it going over the rock underneath. And so it curves around. A section here as well where we're going to have a lot more of these stripes starting to gather in this region especially as we come further down here so let's do that now so we're going to really increase that effect so it could be a series of blobs and then lines that seem to wrap around it somewhat We've already got a sense that there's a dark texture there anyway from earlier on then you can just use that go over it a little bit more exaggerate it lean into it a little bit more and then as it comes further up we just want to have it starting to fragment and pressing on lightly we don't want to bring it into this area we just having a hint of it in this area, having it breaking up, and then it's only as it comes down, it starts to thicken up, coalesce together. And then we can create another layer. And I'm gonna show you now how you can work in between those now and start to bring out some of this effect. So we can go perhaps to the third color along again. We can have it at the 2% size, but ramp it up to 50% opacity. And then we can work on the in-between of those dark shapes. And just with touches here and there, we can bring out the highlights in between those areas now. Again, keep it quite broken. And we can use this color just to really exaggerate some of those gaps again. So again, we're using this bright color just to really exaggerate the contrast in the splits now here in this bottom section. And I can extend some of this all the way up to the top even when the dark bits start to fade out, so you don't notice the, the darker splits near the top, you might still get the highlights 
between them showing up. So you no longer have the dark split showing near the top section, but you would see more of a light still. Now just turn the opacity a bit further down to 20%, brush size up to 3%, and we'll start to just have this going off the bottom of the canvas as well. Okay, I'm going to come back to that effect, but I'm going to start adding some other features now into the blacker areas. So I'm going to create another layer for this. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use the colors that I've been using at the top, where I've used that first color and I've already had the black for the background. So we're probably going to go for this third color along. And I will use the texture brush, but first I'm going to use the soft brush at 3% size and low opacity, somewhere around 20%. Now it's not going to be very visible, which is what we want to begin with. We just want to create some, and I can go over it a few times and that will start to show it up. But I just want to create a sense now that there's light coming in into our scene and it's revealing some of the, the cooled rock shapes that aren't part of the lava, lava flow, but it's where the lava flow is emerging from. So to begin with, I'm just creating some more angular shapes. Keep it quite sketchy. I don't want to take the blue right to the very edge to begin with. So again, we have it quite textured, quite a split in areas. So we'll keep it angular, but it's going to have breaks in it. It's okay to create a harder edge in places. We turn the brush size down to the lower end of 2%. Perhaps there's almost like shelves of different layers building up on one another. So I suppose a bit like we've got the split that we can see in this section, you might see a repeat of that, even in the cooled off areas too. So I'm gonna turn it back up to 3%, just start to add some more angular shapes in here. I think the best way to think about it is if you may get a whole area that's cooled off and forms like a flat surface, but then as things start to move underneath, it starts to split and break and and that's why you might end up with more angular shapes. So I'm gonna to go to my brushes. I've gone to the charcoal brush and the burnt tree, and I'm just gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna go for this last color here in these brighter colors, but I'm gonna turn the size to about 7%, but I'm gonna turn the opacity quite low to about 20%. And I'm just gonna go over some of these areas in places just to increase the, the level of texture. And you won't notice it until I've zoomed in, but it just adds a little bit more depth perhaps. You can always play around with the strength of this. You can turn it up or notch on the opacity just to play around with it here and there. I don't want to really want to use too much of this, but perhaps it just makes some of that texture a bit more interesting. I really honestly quite like just drawing texture manually. So most of the time I will stick to the soft brush or the medium brush within an airbrushing. And I really like to do the specifics myself. So if I've got little broken bits of texture I want to add, I can just do it myself. So I'm adding some slightly more fragmented sections of this blue color within any dark areas now. So I've got the brush set to 2% and the opacity at 20%. And I'm just creating some slightly fragmented bits anywhere where it's really dark. You don't want to completely clutter it up, but it might just make it more interesting to have a few more fragmented sections in there. And then I'm going to start doing some more into these sections here as well. So if you're starting to imagine that it's wrapped around a, a rock or a bump here, perhaps you could just start to create a little hint of something going on in this region so it gives it a sense of how and why it's behaving that way. Again, it might be an area where you want to experiment with those texture brushes again. Charcoal brushes, I think, would be quite useful for this. I'm getting it done quite quickly, but if you want to spend more time on it, then I think that would be a good kind of brush to experiment with. So again, I'm just having some slightly more fragmented textures coming in here, doing it manually. I'm keeping it separate from this flow. The flow is very much going over the top of 
rock here. So if I go back a couple, few layers, in fact, let's go back to that original layer. So you can see on this layer, I've got a slight anomaly here that I want to get rid of. So I can go back in with my eraser, just get rid of that section, keep it a nice neat edge here that's flowing over the rock. And then I can go back to my top layer, back to my brush again, and just have it as a clearly separate element. So I'm gonna almost create a, a change in direction. So the rock or the cool lava is going in one direction and then it flows over in a different direction. And again, in this section, I'm having the lava flowing in and around some of these rocks. So I'm gonna include some of the shapes that perhaps are just revealing through the lava flow. Go back to my colors. I'm going to create another layer. Now this gives me a nice edge now at this point because I now see where the edge of that flow is going to go. So I'm going to use the third color along again. I'm going to use it at the 2% size and 20% opacity. But I can just use this now to perhaps just define the edge of that flow. And now I now know where that edge is so I can just highlight it perhaps. Just give it a definite sense of an edge. It may well reflect onto the rocks that are immediately near to it, so I can use the darker red, perhaps just to create a sense, not that's too much in fact, just lightly hint that it's reflecting onto the rocks underneath it, but we don't want to create too much of that. We're going to stick to the lightest colour on that very edge, and then we can work from there back into our splits again in these sections. So again, perhaps we just have some sections here that are reflecting back onto the rocks. If we've got that angular shape, we can use this lighter color now just to bounce some of the light that's created here back up onto the edges of those rocks. We want it to look like it's a, a reflected light though, so just be subtle with it. Think about what would be immediately facing it. And then I'm gonna go to the brighter of the colors now, so I'm gonna go for this yellow and I'm really gonna start bringing out in areas some of this yellow. Or perhaps we can extend it certain areas a little bit further. So I'm just gonna create some slightly more broken texture in this area. I want it to be a little bit more impactful. And also just the odd point here and there, even a little bit further down, I think will look dramatic and interesting. So again, I'm alternating between some of these bright oranges and the yellow, working to create a drama between the dark and the light areas. So again, use the white and the brightest yellows sparingly, but have fun with it. So I'm just bringing in a little bit more of the white here again just to really sell the drama of those white areas. So I'm only working on the refining the details with a, a small brush, I've got it at 2%. Uh, I'm just going into the lighter areas that already exist and just bringing out some of those light colors even more. So I'm using the yellow and the white. There's nothing wrong at this stage. We're just going in and ramping it up even further, making it even more dramatic. So yellow, then white. I'm gonna extend this even further down, I think. I think it will work better if I do that. So we're going to take it even further down into this section. Again, I'm being guided by the orange, the light orange sections that are already there. So I don't want to go straight into a darker area, but if there's already a light orange area, then I can just bring out more of that color with the yellow. 
and then a hint more white as well. So I've just turned the brush size up even further to around 4%. I'm just whacking in a load more yellow up here, intensifying it even more. Then I'll go back into it with the white, slightly more refined at 3%, but I'm just going for it right now. Then again, I'm just gonna go for the yellow, 2%, and just bring out some strong yellows along the edge, but not quite as bright, but still. Let's increase the drama of the piece, push it even further in places. So once you've got to a certain stage, I've got some nice pinks and purple colors here, so I'm gonna use them selectively. I'm gonna go for this pink color. I probably will create a new layer for this. I'm gonna put it up to around 5% size and low on the opacity at 10%, but I'm just going to start bringing in a hint of this pink color, because all the light that's hitting the rock here would also reflect over sections of the lava as well. So I'm gonna, in this corner, bring in some of this pink and perhaps over here too. And just think about your particular section, where it's gonna reflect back the light from above. So I've got a section here, perhaps that's gonna have more of this pink, whereas this section won't so much. Go back to my colors. Got another darker purple here, which could be quite nice. Perhaps I use this more in this section, just a hint of it. Be careful not to go over the white areas though. You don't want a, a, purple sh a purple color going over there. Back to my colors. I've got this slightly light purple here, which is a really nice color. I'll turn the brush size down to 2%, have it at around 20%. And I'm just gonna use it now to perhaps just pick out highlights amongst all these little sections here now that are darker bits because they're going to reflect the light back from above as well. So zoom in a little bit. I'm keeping it quite rough at this stage. I'm, I'm working quite quickly. I'm roughly spending just about an hour on this piece of work. Now you can take all of these techniques and this aesthetic, this look, and spend a great deal longer on your version and really fine tune and get the details just so. Now obviously I'm rushing, relatively rushing through this for the benefit of the tutorial. So it's a slightly rough effect in places, but it's about building that effect and creating the overall look. And hopefully this is helping you understand how to do that. Now don't worry if your version doesn't look exactly the same, as long as you've picked up a technique or two and a general sense of how things might be structured, then that's absolutely fine. I'm gonna use just a hint of that at the very top on the rocks or the cooler parts, just to add a little bit more of a bright highlight in those top sections. Again, we're just on the 2% size and low opacity, sort of 10, 12%. We're just fine tuning at this point. I'm probably gonna leave it there. I hope this has been useful. I hope that's helped you understand how to build this kind of effect. If you followed along, do make sure to tag me or to share it with me on Facebook or Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Hit that bell notification and I hope to catch you back here again soon. See you later.